Welcome back to the channel guys. Gonna get straight into the content, a lot to get through for this. This is our D7 visa process. We know that there's a lot of information out there but it's changing all the time and it's different it seems for everybody who applies. This is our process and what we would say is the most important to get sorted first thing away. It's important to note is we're applying from the United Kingdom and I think each country is a bit different so um, this is just our personal experience. Yeah, we've seen on different forums that people from Dubai or different countries are getting accepted like that. Maybe that's a financial thing, we don't know, but our process uh, took us approximately three or four months. So this could help you get your sorted a lot quicker as in hindsight, we've learned a lot about the process. So first things first, we would advise to do is establish contact with the consulate. If you go onto the consulate website, our local one was either Edinburgh or Manchester, depending where you are in the country, you'll have to use your local consulate. If you're in the south, it's usually London. So we use Manchester as this was in direct contact with the Portuguese consulate, Edinburgh not in direct contact for the D7 visa process. Establishing contact via email is in, in our advice the best way to go. You can actually go onto a website called VFS Global and book your own appointment once you believe you've got all of the documents to apply for actual application. But I think establishing contact with the consulate, they actually ask you to send over the documents once compiled in a PDF form and then they give you an appointment. So you're not gonna turn up and then we're gonna say, well, you need this extra document, this extra document. Because we found that, that mm. they emailed saying extra stuff that we weren't aware that we needed. Mm -hmm. So um, it's definitely important to try and get contact with them because mm -hmm. they might say something that you don't even know because it's changing all the mm -hmm. time. But as it happened, we actually did do that, sent over a lot of PDF and we got to our appointment and they still asked for more things once we got there because we ended up dealing with a completely different individual as we were emailing. So as you'll know with the Portuguese process, nothing is ever simple. <laughs> so. That's the first thing is establish contact. One well, of the important things to get sorted straight away is your NIF number. NIF number? NIF number. <laughs> <laughs> NIF or fiscal number. The NIF is basically your fiscal number for Portugal uh, to process taxes, etc. for any work that you may do in the country. Uh, allows you to open bank accounts, etc. So we needed this to be able to open a bank account. The process now, recently, only recently, you actually need to have a bank account in Portugal to put the minimum wage requirements for one year before you actually apply for the D7 visa. So you need your fiscal number, your NIF number, to be able to open a bank account. So this process can take, we were advised 48 hours, but as it turned out for us, even with help with a lawyer, it took around two weeks. So. That is probably one of the first things you want to look to get sorted. We would advise order. getting a lawyer as well because mm. it's not as easy as you think. No. We actually paid for a lawyer around about 300 euros and we're glad that we did because she gave us a lot of advice for different areas of the D7 as well for the criminal checks on the Portuguese side. We didn't know how to fill the forms and also the application form within itself is uh, not as self-explanatory as you may expect. There is actually websites where you can do your NIF, we believe, by yourself. Also, one of the things that was good about taking a lawyer is that she now is our fiscal representative. Mm. Yeah, she's our fiscal representative now and that basically means that it will be her address that our our fiscal or tax number is registered to her address. So that expunges obviously a lot of intermediaries if you like and I believe that if you want to apply for your own NIF number you need a registered address in Portugal already which we didn't have at the time. It's really like a chicken and the egg scenario so we believe that getting a lawyer is the easiest way to receive your NIF although there is obviously different and cheaper ways to be able to receive your NIF. Another thing to add about the fiscal number, both applicants do not need a fiscal number to open a bank account so we were advised from the lawyer that only the main applicant, which in our case was myself, needed a fiscal number. If we wanted two NIF numbers, we would have had to pay another 300 euros. And once you were in Portugal, now like we are now, uh, you can visit the local Fincas de Centro, uh, 
think I got that right. It's basically the financial centre, which is generally in different areas, uh, towns, villages that you can visit to get an NIF number. And not sure if the process is free at this point, but I don't think it's going to be as much as 300 euros. So we only got one NIF number to process our application. I think it made it easy, the fact that we were married, because they asked for um, like a marriage certificate as proof that we're married. Mm -hmm. So if you're not married, I don't know if that would be possible. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to look into that. So moving on. Next thing is your bank. bank account. There are loads of different bank accounts you can use. There's loads of forums online which recommend different bank accounts. And there are some that you can set up yourself. We went for Novo Bank. Mm. We were advised from our lawyer that Nova Banco was the quickest, so that's why we went for it. Us being from the UK, Nova Banco didn't, or any bank that you get from Portugal doesn't really offer any good or additional services that you can use your bank account in different countries. It's not like England where if you're traveling around the EU you can get bank accounts which offer free service with withdrawals and stuff like that. Really you're not getting any additional services with Portuguese bank accounts, so we just went for the quickest that you can open just to get sorted as soon as possible. I'm not sure whether now we are going through the process and we are here, we can get cards from a different bank that we can get additional services to make things cheaper or better here in Portugal. But as far as the UK, it didn't matter which bank account that we were going to use. So we went with Nova Banco as per instruction from our lawyer that we were using. And she also set that up with the NIF, so that's sorted a whole process that we didn't need to do also. So you actually have to transfer money into this bank account as part of the D7Vs and have to prove that you've got a certain amount of money for the application. Mm -hmm. It depends on if it's one applicant or two applicants. Mm -hmm. So we had to transfer about... Mm -hmm. It's just over 12,000 euros in there. So it's basically the minimum wage requirements for Portugal, which I think is around 705 euros per month, which for the first, the main applicant is around eight and a half thousand euros, and for a second applicant, it's half that amount. So eight, eight and a half thousand plus four to fifty, round about twelve thousand. But we would advise check this at the time, and if you're in contact with the consul, like we advise, firstly, they will advise you of what the minimum requirement is at, at the time of your application. Moving on. The next thing that was difficult to sort is the accommodation. In hindsight, in hindsight it was very difficult. We thought it was going to be easier than it mm. was, but um, and a lot of people online and the forums they have a lot of questions about this as well so i think it's a common issue that people find mm. they don't make it easy for you you have to have a 12-month contract for mm. an accommodation not many people want to give you it if you're not in the country no. so this is one of the things we found difficult and in mm. hindsight maybe coming to portugal having a look speaking to people in person might be easier mm -hmm. rather than trying to do it online if you own a property in portugal then that process is is, is a lot more simple but we didn't want to buy a property without viewing, seeing what area that we want to have a look around in, potentially want to buy in. So we chose the route of renting before we buy. So with us not being in the country, with us not wanting to travel backwards and forwards, we waited until we had gotten all the NIF number and the bank account sorted, which was around about a month, a month and a half. And in hindsight, we would have started looking for accommodation as soon as we decided we wanted to apply for the D7 residency. A lot of the people that we were contacting, because we were in Portugal, were either not replying. Us personally, we can understand if you were a landlord, you would want to meet the, yeah. the, the tenant, so it is understandable. We were looking at locations where it was more preferable to us. We wanted to hopefully be by, by the coast for the year and be able to go surfing or be just by the cities, Porto, in case anybody wanted to visit. A lot of properties that we were contacting just weren't getting back to us at all. Went from sending messages to a few preferable properties, what we found, to sending messages to any viable properties whatsoever. One of the difficult things, we didn't know when we were gonna get out to Portugal, so when the contract would start. Mm. And a lot of people wanted it to start immediately. Yes, yes. Um, and we didn't we, know how long the process was going to take, so you're paying for potentially paying for months up front mm. that you wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. um, so that was. And you're also they are asking for security deposit. So before you have even gotten your D7 visa from the English side, you are paying security deposit. If you don't get accepted for your English English D7, the the first part of your D7 then you've potentially lost two to three months rent, which even with a cheaper property, that could be 
thousand euros or, or more. A lot of people online uh, recommend that you can actually get a clause in the contract which states that if you don't get approved for your visa and you can't actually get out to Portugal to use then the contract's terminated but I can't imagine very many landlords no. being willing to do this. No. Basically what the process is in Portugal, a landlord to write up a contract and to offer a contract they are already liable for taxes so they aren't going to write you a contract unless you have paid them some sort of subsidiary that you aren't going to receive back if the contract is to fall through. You also now have to have a 12 month contract. I think it used to be six months was all right. It was a grey area. Yeah, now it has to be 12 months. Mm. So that's important to get. Mm -hmm. It's similar to the bank account not so long ago. It's changed, like I say, it's changing all the time. It used to be six months rental contract was okay. Now, from what we gathered from our process, you need really one full year, 12 month contract. And the same with the bank account, your minimum requirements need to be in a Portuguese bank account now where it was a bit of a grey area, some people were getting accepted with money in their English bank accounts, now it has to be actually in a Portuguese bank account. Another important thing would be to ask them what the notice period is, so if you come to Portugal and you want to move on elsewhere, you are here for however long the notice period is, you're going to receive your security deposit back and then you can go on and maybe another rental or even if you buy because we've got a 12 month rental contract, within that one year we might find somewhere that we want to buy. Luckily we've got somewhere where we can leave within a short notice, but if your notice period is three, four months, then you are going to be liable to either pay that rent, otherwise you're going to lose two to three months security deposit. So that's worth bearing in mind. We actually got a mortgage pre-approval as well mm. uh, before we apply for the D7 which again I think helped the application to show that we are legitimately interested mm. in living here and buying and mm -hmm. moving out here. Yeah that's one thing they are really interested in at the consulate is making sure that they think that you are actually coming here to live. Some people have used friends addresses here in Portugal sometimes I think that that can be a little bit tentative with the consulate and the, and the Portuguese authorities as they might think that you were just basically coming over here to travel which obviously isn't as accessible as it once was pre-Brexit for us people in the UK. So we'll just touch quickly on the application form. You can get this from the consulate, print it out yourself. It's not too difficult to fill in but it was helpful. We used the lawyer for this mm. as well. Mm -hmm. She just gave us some tips on what to put in each section and it's in Portuguese so you may have to translate some parts mm, of it just mm -hmm. so that you are filling it out correctly. Yeah, We said 300 euros for the, the, the fiscal number but she helped us out in lots of different areas, our lawyer. She helped us with application forms, the criminal checks that you have to authorise the Portuguese authorities to be, to be able to do on your behalf which is in Portuguese and not exactly self-explanatory either. You also have to get a English criminal records check, so the DBS is what we got. Really easy to do, you can um, apply for it online. It's just your basic information. You only need the basic one and then they do the checks on their side. What I would add is resources are available online for you to print out but establishing contact with the consulate in itself, they actually sent us these forms via email so that made things a lot easier and printed out the application forms and, and other things that we needed for the application process. He sent us a, a, an email listing everything basically that we needed to send them back in PDF form to receive an appointment at the Manchester Consulate. So Part of the application you had to prove <laughs> You had to prove your income. One of the things they're really interested in is if we had a work contract already in Portugal. Um, we actually work online, so it wasn't as easy to prove that we have a work contract. To prove that our income, we actually printed off our bank statements and highlighted our pay coming in. But they also asked for our tax returns and things like that as well. As much information as you can provide, it basically will benefit um, when you go through the application process. To tie in with income etc, it's going to be all your assets, investments, passive income is a big one for anybody with passive income from property or, or elsewhere, dividends, pensions, uh, so you're going to need to supply all that information. That will all go towards your minimum requirements for the yearly basic income. If you can provide passive income 
uh, amounting to over 705 euros for a month for the, the entire application, then you're pretty much good to go. They also asked us to do a supporting letter to state that we did work online and how much mm -hmm. we earned and mm -hmm. that we were going to continue doing this once we got to Portugal. Mm -hmm. They were more interested in the supporting letter about finances than they were about the personal statement, yeah. which we'll touch on a bit later. Yeah. The supporting letter, we actually took one to the consulate and after our appointment with email contact, we needed to supply extra information. I actually rewrote the supporting letter the one that we took down there, I assumed that with the other information that we had provided and different parts of the application, i.e. our assets, bank statements, etc., that they would look at this and see that we have got that amount of money coming in from the bank statements, we have got that amount of holdings from assets, but you need to put this also into the supporting letter because we actually didn't do that and they don't want to sit forever and a day looking through the whole application. They want to look at the personal statement, make sure everything's pinpoint and proper. So you want to put down your everything to do with every bit of income in your supporting letter, everything to do with your assets. So you were providing it in a hard copy from your personal assets and bank statements, but it's also in your supporting letter. So it's all compiled to show that you actually have got everything that is required of the application so that's something that's worth bearing in mind to see if you have to do things over and just make sure that everything that they want to hear is in that supporting letter as per the personal statement personal statement a lot of people online again ask about this but they didn't really seem that bothered no, um it was kind so of just we kind of wrote half a page about looked like you looked at it for about five seconds or something didn't it it was we thought that we thought it was going to be more important than mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. So we just wrote why we wanted to move to Portugal, what we loved about the country, what, basically just why we want to move here. I wouldn't worry about it too much if the supporting letter and the financial stuff seems to be more important for them. Mm -hmm. Travel insurance, pretty explanatory, not going to go into this, get travel insurance, that's it. <laughs> just your basic travel insurance which has medical cover, mm. they accepted that. It, ours was like £20 or something, something like, like that. that. It was Very really cheap. cheap. Easy to do. Um, I wouldn't get bogged down with that too much. Yeah. We photocopied our work qualifications as well, put them in there, any sort of certificates or anything that you've got and go to support. As far as work, touching on work as well, most people who are seeming to do the D7 process either receive income by passive income or they can work remotely. Otherwise, you're gonna need a work contract in Portugal. So unless you know somebody and you already have a pre-approved contract, then it's a no-go, basically. You need a works contract. You need to be able to show that you can earn either remotely or you've got a contract when you come to Portugal. If you can't show that you're earning or like I touched on earlier with the people applying from Dubai, if they've got muito, muito dinero, lots and lots of money, basically, then them are gonna get accepted straight away. But if you've only got a certain amount of money, you're gonna to need to show that you can actually support yourself while you're here. Like we said before, get in contact with the consulate. They will let you know everything that you need to bring on the day for your appointment. You need to bring your passports, obviously, that they photocopy them. Mm. They photocopy all the things that were just mentioned on the list. Passport photos. And you need, yeah, passports photos. Mm -hmm. so they took a copy after I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And they actually take your passport on the day. Mm, they take it and they keep it so they actually send that to Portugal mm. with your application and if you get accepted your passport returns with the visa mm -hmm. within inside the passport yeah the processor said they've got six weeks a maximum of six weeks to either accept or reject your application took us from our appointment at Manchester took 22 days for that to arrive on our doorstep which is about average, I think. Some people are getting accepted a little bit quicker, some people obviously longer, depending if you need to supply extra documents, etc. Ours actually froze, didn't it? They requested an extra document. So we lost about a week. Mm -hmm. So I think we could have done it faster mm, if, um, if they'd emailed quicker. Yeah, yeah if they'd <laughs> they, emailed quicker. They're yeah. not, the, not the best, the, the correspondence, so be aware. So that about sums up everything that you need to know. I hope this video has been useful. Write in the comments if you've got any questions and we'll try and get back to you if there's any things that you're not sure about. Everybody's application process is gonna be different. So if there's anything that we haven't touched on that we can help with, we will leave it in the comments like Jen just said. We are gonna to touch on the process on the Portuguese side now we've been accepted from the English side or wherever your home country is 
as this isn't a simple process either, as you, you might have gathered by now. Watch them videos as they come out. Thank you for watching. Drop us a like and a sub and... What are you looking at? <laughs> Drop us a like and a sub, please. <laughs> and we will see you on the next one.